the Marlins and the Diamondbacks underway in game four Miller fires a fastball high to Augie Ojeda who has had a bit part in this uh, series up the middle the Diamondbacks giving Felipe Lopez who had four hits last night in the second game and Stephen Drew the night off at least to start with and Miller misses up. Yeah, it's a small sample size, Rich, but it's uh, just nice to get Felipe Lopez out of the lineup. Four for eight against Andrew Miller, plus he has had a terrific series. And the double play that the that pair turned in the 11th last night was an interesting one. Obviously, it was a huge play for the Diamondbacks. The Marlins had a chance for a walk-off win, and A.J. Hinch really rolled the dice and... Every move that he made last night worked out. That move, he had the infield in, but the ground ball brought Lopez towards the bag at second, and it almost looked like Lopez says, what the heck, let's go for two. And Drew turned a nice double play. That's a good point. When the infield is in, your play as an infielder, if you turn a double play, it's going to go to the plate first because you have to try to cut that run down. It's the winning run. And then maybe... pitch the breaking ball that just never had a chance there and all of a sudden now he's not going to be in the mood to throw it again he doesn't have a feel for it yet so he's going to throw his fastball Roberts knew that and he whacked it into left center just eliminate pitches is all he did right there smart hitting about 900 feet of home run for Justin Upton as he settles into the box two upper deck shots last night he is now slugging over 600 on the season, 626, as he takes a fastball over the inside corner. Jerry Lane says strike one. He has hit in 23 of his last 25 games. 35 hits, 12 walks during that time. 18 of his 35 hits are extra base hits. More than half. Oh, and two the count. Roberts out at second. One and two. Andrew Miller, six and ten last year in 20 starts and an ERA close to six. And thus in the offseason, 
He wanted to change his mechanics. He and Mark Wiley worked out the new delivery. Pop up. Ugla makes the catch. Little weather brought to you by Mikasuki. <laughs> Look at that. A proud peacock. 82 degrees. Come play our way. Mikasuki. Here's Reynolds. It's not easy to change your delivery. I mean, when you've been pitching like that all your life. And for Miller, the change, a lot more open. Direct line to the plate. Talking to him the other day, and it is to the point now, at least, where he doesn't have to think about it. He can just go out to the mound and hopefully concentrate on other things. But when you're out there thinking about a change, uh, that's not good at this level. And the oblique injury, in Miller's words, caused because his body probably wasn't prepared for that delivery. And a lot of uh, core work and different muscles used because of the change in his delivery. And he changed his exercise routine when he went on the disabled list. And I, I think he understands the uh, change. And I think he understands that it's needed for him to succeed. Mark Reynolds certainly has succeeded in this series. You know, Upton's two homers were upper deck and three run shots. But Reynolds had two big home runs last night as well. Two run shot in the seventh. And one late in the ball game as well. This is off Reniel Pinto. The two run shot wiped out a Marlins lead in the seventh. Kind of erased a nice night by Burke Badenhop. And this was off of Dan Meyer. Rough uh, double header for Dan Meyer. He gave up home run in each uh, game, the first game, the second game. And this guy's been on fire. Also, Reynolds has in this series five stolen bases. So he's done a little bit of everything and made some nice plays at third base. Big swing and a miss. And so with two outs and Roberts out at second, Miller trying to get through this first. That's a good example right there of trusting your stuff. A 3-1 pitch, you know that Reynolds was looking for a fastball. He got it and still didn't hit it. Walked him. And here comes the uh, energetic Eric Burns. And I like the way you put it. Entertaining series by Eric Burns. Whether he's belly flopping into second or kung fu fighting in left field or dropping the ball over the wall last night in the corner. Or arguing a call at first base. I think you put it best last night when you said, uh, you know, Burns did get a big contract and he was hurt last year. He's not really performing up to that contract this year, but it's not like he's not trying. You're always going to get the effort uh, out of Eric Burns. All right, this, this is the play on the Deaza ball. Went to throw it back, and it slipped out of his hand. Deaza got to move on another another 90 feet. <laughs> Went from a double to a, a three base. It was a double and an error. Burns has made three errors. Runners are moving. Baker's throw is behind the runner. Out at second. And the Diamondbacks, and this is not just the Diamondbacks, but teams lately really have run on the fish. The amazing thing for Mark Reynolds mentioned five, six stolen bases now in this series. The jump at second by Roberts so huge that Baker decided to go to second. But that's the tenth stolen base for Reynolds already. He had 11 last year. You often say that judging a player on another team it takes more than just watching one series but I think in the one series that we've seen with Mark Reynolds you see the type of player he could be if he could be this guy every day in the big leagues. Yeah. Oh yeah absolutely. But I don't know if we've always saw that or seen that right. when when we played uh, Arizona. 
Ground ball in the hole. Burns can run. And Cantu picks it. Diamondbacks would have scored twice had he not. Baseball está disponible en español vía SAP y es presentado por KFC. Here comes the fish line up. The Marlins will lead it off with Emilio Bonifacio. Jeremy Hermida has had a good series. Hanley Ramirez right behind him. Jorge Cantu, John Baker. Uglin went deep twice yesterday. Ross's bat is alive. Chris Coughlin is scuffling right now. And Andrew Miller is in the nine spot. And there is the 24-year-old Max Scherzer. Good live arm from this right-hander out of Missouri. His last start yielded his first big league win. He's been the king of the no decision early in his career because he was uh, in the rotation last year for seven starts. Seven starts. He, he pitched out of the bullpen nine times. So he had... Some activity, but no wins last year. The Marlins have faced there a share of soft tossers. There is nothing soft about uh, Max Scherzer. He likes to bring it. And generally with that fastball, he has confidence in it. He likes to go right after hitters. He'll use a slider. We saw a change up earlier in the count to Bonifacio. There's a strike. Bonifacio checks in at 257. One for five in the second game last night. And he takes strike three right down the middle. Yikes. Not quite sure what he was looking for. If, if you're a, a slap hitter and you get in that part of the count, you're not going to see anything but a fastball. Burns, Young, and Upton. Reynolds at third. Tracy at first. Ojeda gets the start at short. Ryan Roberts, the second baseman. And Chris Snyder behind the plate. Yeah, I mean, some hitters, the power hitters, maybe on a 3-2 pitch, you might see something else. But a leadoff guy who's a slap hitter, not going to hit the ball out of the park. That's all you're going to see, especially from a guy like Scherzer. Three hits in the second game last night for Hermita. And a hit as well in the first game. Including a two run homer for Hermita, his fourth of the season. And Scherzer sends that one to the screen. 2006 draft. There were some pretty good arms that went in the early rounds, including Scherzer, who was 11th overall to the Diamondbacks. The Detroit Tigers with the sixth overall pick took Andrew Miller. And here they are tonight. With the seventh pick, the Dodgers took Clayton Kershaw. We just saw him. With the tenth pick, the Giants took Tim Lincecum. 
Romita slaps one. Reynolds on his knees. Oh, he's safe at first. What an effort by Reynolds. Hermita legs out a base hit. More of that Reynolds guy. We were just talking about him and some of the plays he's made. The stolen bases, the long balls. Great pick from his knees. But Jeremy Hermita able to get there. Let's see if Tracy had to come off the bag, the first baseman. Yeah, he may have just stepped off the bag. That's what the umpire at first, Tony Randazzo, told us. But an infield base hit for Jeremy Hermita. Here's Hanley Ramirez. Hanley last night, a quiet night. And he chops this one to Reynolds. On the bag? Yep, on the bag. And out. Roberts kept his toe on the bag just long enough. Reynolds making another nice play. That was, a tough, that was a tough doubleheader for Hanley. He was 0 for 9 in the doubleheader and bounces into that force play. Cantu last night had a couple of hits in both games. Hanley's running on the first pitch. Snyder's throw. And it's not in time. Hanley swipes the bag. Good to see Hanley with a good jump, good speed, and to get himself in scoring position for Jorge Cantu early in the count, not waste too much time. Even if you're 0 for 10, you can do little things to help the club. So Cantu sitting on a 1 0 pitch. Or he fouls it off and it's one ball and one strike. Marlins had the distinction last night of starting their doubleheader two hours before any other game in baseball started and then finishing their doubleheader after every game in baseball had finished. And an agonizing night. For Freddy Gonzalez. Hanley has a running lead. Scherzer steps off. And a balk is called. Jerry Lane, the home plate umpire, calling the balk. I'm not sure Scherzer completely stepped off the rubber. Let's see what Scherzer does when he notices Hanley. It. Like he slid that back foot off, but you know, I think what you have to do, I think he slid it towards first base. You have to step off right on the backside completely, right? Because if, if you don't and you throw to third, Cantu takes down low, he's throwing to an unoccupied base, and you can't make a, a direct move off the mound to an unoccupied base. Cantu goes after the changeup. Two and two. Or he gets a piece. And Miguel Montero. Whoop, got the bad hop. The Diamondbacks could use a, a little humor after a, a tough day yesterday. Of course, the death of the wife of Scott Schoenweiss. And with uh, Schoenweiss headed back to his family in Phoenix, the Diamondbacks, much like the Marlins, made a couple of moves, added some arms. Kyler Newby and Clay Zavada. Zavada up from Mobile. Ground ball, base hit, Cantu delivers again with two outs. Does he just keep doing it time after time? His average with runners in scoring position has come down a little bit. But you put him in that situation, and he always gives Freddie and the ball club a good at bat. 
found that hole and with Hanley at third base after the buck puts the Marlins on top. Now Baker. Scherzer misses. I think the surprise to all of us last night in that 11th inning was when John Baker was up there with an opportunity runners at first and third and nobody out. Then he swung at the first pitch because we we've seen him be so patient. That's a strike. Yeah, he went after a sinker. And rolled it out to Felipe Lopez. And that was the first out of the inning that set the whole sequence in motion. The walk to Ugla. And then Ross's ground ball out to Lopez that ended up being a double play. And the Marlins had first and third. But nobody out and the runner at third was the winning run in that the 11th. By the way the RBI for Jorge Cantu number 35. He's fourth in the National League. Some pretty good names. Three guys are tied for first. Prince Fielder Albert Pujols and Raul Ibanez. Ibanez may have the lead after the Phillies scored 12 runs today though in Cincinnati. He homered. He has the lead 15 for Ibanez 15 homers. Baker will broken bat shot up the middle and Roberts will flip it on to short in time but the fish are on the board Cantu does the job again. Marlins lead RBI single for Cantu rivals waterfront sports grill in Hollywood on Wednesday the 27th is where you want to be for the Marlins watch party Marlins and Philly 705 Billy and the mermaids will be there you can win tickets to upcoming games you can enjoy great food and there'll be drink specials as well at rivals 1877 Marlins Rich you know I have some good news and I have some I guess not so good news because we've seen the Marlins many times during this uh, stretch this bad stretch score early and score first when when leading after the first inning the Marlins have lost seven times and that ties the major league lead. I guess that was all bad news. There's a statistic for everything. <laughs> you know that I yeah. mean literally last night we were scrambling to find Longest double headers ever. And the Marlins didn't quite crack the uh, the all time barrier, though they apparently played the fifth longest double header since 94. 
it's nights like last night where Ken Lee earns every penny he makes. Little pop out into shallow center. Uncle's out there, and he makes the catch. Yeah, it's nights uh, like last night that put Ken Lee in that upper tax bracket. And shave years off his life <laughs> with all the hard work. I mean, the Aflac duck was even scrambling around last night. He should have seen the duck this afternoon when he got to the ballpark. Disheveled, wobbly, feathers askew, ruffled. He had that look on his face that he has in the commercial with Yogi Berra. Sort of that, huh? Yeah. <laughs> Chris Snyder's up. Snyder, a product of the University of Houston. We have some uh, great colleges represented in this ball game. Houston, a, a very good program. Hermita loping over after it, and he's there. Nice play by Jeremy. Got a good jump and ran it down by the wall. On that ball off the bat of a right-hander that's slicing away from you as an outfielder, you, you've got to keep going after it. If you start off and stay easy, it's going to slice away from you. You're not going to get it. you got to keep going hard. And Jeremy Hermita does that and stayed right with it and caught it in foul territory. Here is Chris Young. Now he grew up in Houston, went to a Bel Air High School, one of the good programs in the city of Houston. Now this has not been a good series for Chris Young. Yeah, it's uh, lots of K's. He's been up five times and he has struck out five times. And he fouls that pitch back quickly. Miller's out in front, 0 and 2. Well, Young last year struck out 165 times, 38 punch outs this year, and that's in just 129 at bats. And he swings and misses at that one. So Miller gets a strikeout, his first of the night, and works a brief 1, 2, 3 second. Coming to town, the American League champs, the Rays. Sonnenstein, Nolasco matchup in game one to be announced on Saturday. Look at Sunday's matchup. James Shields, Josh Johnson, the Rays, who are finishing up their uh, series, or actually uh, have finished their series by scoring three times in the ninth inning to beat Oakland six to five. So the Rays uh, run their record to 21 and 22. Joe Nelson getting the win in relief. So they beat Oakland six to five. 
Ugla takes inside. Now Daniel last night got hot. Remember about, I guess it was four or five days ago, we threw up some head shots and said these are some bats that need to get going as the rain starts to fall. Well, all of those bats have uh, have got going, including Ugla, who sprays that one out to right, up and over, and makes the catch. I mean, the, the guys in that shot, Tommy, were Ugla, who homered twice yesterday, Ross, who has had a, a very nice home stand, and Hermita, who's gotten on track. Yeah, with uh, Jeremy Hermita's base hit, uh, his first time up, he's uh, gone five for his last ten. And Cody Ross on a six game hitting streak. And during that six games, at least one extra base hit in each of those games. Ross takes a look at the rain. And he takes a look at a fastball as well. Yeah, those uh, drops coming quickly, and they're big, big raindrops. Our Geico quote of the night. It's a little soggy, but bear with us. I knew going into the game one, we had to start producing. Otherwise, guys would come in and take your spot. I wasn't going to let that happen. Scherzer has missed on all three pitches. Let's see if Cody gets a green light. Sometimes, especially when you have a hot hitter. Two things. He's hot enough that he's not going to chase a bad pitch. And if he hits something, he's going to hit it hard. <laughs> like that. Cody Ross. Stays hot. His average now up at 250. They got a high fastball, a 3 1 fastball from Scherzer. And smacked it hard up the middle. Chris Coglin now. Pitch to Coglin. Now, one of the busiest guys during this series has been Alan Sigward, the fine groundskeeper here. And I think with that little whoosh of the hand, he was telling Jerry Lane that this is just a passing shower. Just a whoosh that's going to go through. And that's why uh, you don't see a lot of the ground crew members uh, huddled around the tarp. Usually when uh, the radar tells us other things, you, you see that uh, group down there. Like that swoosh. Pretty soon we won't have to worry about the swooshes. Well, then the roof will go swoosh. <laughs> Scherzer is kind of showing you a little bit of what uh, has been an issue for him at times. We talk about pitch count and trying to keep it. Uh, Keep it down for Scherzer. That's been an issue. Some well prepared Marlins fans. And I think that's why the uh, Diamondbacks made their moves, getting a couple of fresh arms here, because A.J. Hitch knows that uh, Scherzer probably is not going to take him deep into the game because he throws a lot of pitches. Coglin's aboard. And so Miller will come up with a chance to bunt the runners up. Mel Stottlemyre Jr. out there. Let's see what the uh, scouting report tells us uh, about Scherzer. Hides the body, ball a little bit because he has that across the bot. Body delivery. And last time out, as Rich mentioned, picked up his first major league win. He got a lot of support. A 12 to nothing win in Atlanta. He went six innings, gave up four hits and no runs to the Braves. Woo! 
Miller shortens, takes high. Scherzer wild. Andrew trying to just get this one down, move Ross and Coglin up. Good bunt. Scherzer got him. So Bonifacio comes up with runners at second and third. Very nice bunt by Andrew Miller. Just touched it out there in the right spot. The only play for Scherzer was to first base. So Bonifacio, who struck out in the first, Marlins got a run in that inning on a Cantu single. That's a strike. And that's similar to the pitch that he struck out on. Yeah, if you remember, he got that count three and two, and he took a fastball right there. Now he chases one. That's that one he's trying to lay off of, but a, a tough one. Scherzer, a strikeout pitcher, no question. His minor league totals, but only 143 innings in the minor leagues because he's been on the fast track here. But 143 innings, 185 strikeouts. He almost ended up in the independent leagues because he was a, a first round holdout when the Diamondbacks drafted him in 06. They did not sign him until one minute before the midnight deadline. At the end of May in 07, when he finally settled for a little over $4 million. Teams have a certain amount of time where they can sign their, their picks. And the Scherzer had signed and was going to go play independently ball and throw his name in the draft. The next draft, but the Diamondbacks and Scherzer struck a deal at the very end. And that's one area of the system that I think is wrong. There should be, if you're going to put a cap on anything, put it on first round draft picks. A guy who has never stepped onto a professional field, let alone a major league field, should not hold a gun to a team's head and demand X amount of money. So on draft picks, there should be a cap. Little ground ball to third. Reynolds safe. And the Marlins pick up a run on a cue shot by Bonifacio. Well, a couple of nice things in this inning. Number one, the, the beautiful bump by Andrew Miller sets the stage for this. If the runners haven't advanced, Cody Ross isn't at third base. So the little squiver up the line, a tough play for Reynolds. And with the speed of Bonifacio, he beats the throw and gets the infield single and an RBI and gives the Marlins another run. It happens in other sports, but probably not as much as baseball and certainly in other sports guys that are drafted are much closer to being ready to perform at that level in the NFL in the NHL in the NBA. In baseball very very few first round picks go right in and make an impact and start playing at the big league level. You had a few names on that 06 draft and there were some on that uh, list that haven't materialized yet. Some some outstanding, but some that haven't materialized. First overall pick, Luke Hochaver for the uh, Kansas City Royals. Bonifacio was leading. The second overall pick, Greg Reynolds, 
out of Colorado. And I would bet you, and I don't know this for sure, that both Kansas City and Colorado probably drafted those two guys because they felt they could sign them. See, and that shouldn't be an issue either. If you're Kansas City, if you're the Marlins, if you're Pittsburgh, you should be able to draft that number one guy and and not not drafting because you feel you can't sign him. Of course there were a few teams that missed on the number 10 pick because they didn't think he had the type of body to succeed. Is that Lincecum? Tim Lincecum. <laughs> The number three pick in that draft behind Hochaver Reynolds was Evan Longoria of Tampa Bay. That one is clicked. Yes. We talked about RBI leaders. Longoria leading the American League with 46 coming into play today. And right behind him, Jason Bay. Swing and a miss. Hermita goes down, but the Marlins scratch out another run. And they lead it 2 0. Back at Landshark Stadium with the Marlins up 2-0 uh, as we start the third with Anthony the sign guy as we were last night. We showed you a couple of his new signs, but Rich and Tommy, we've got a little surprise for you. Anthony, what do you got? Well, let's see. we got a couple of guys in the booth up there that hit a home run every time they uh, take the booth every single night. So and what do you have for And him? the first one is for Rich Walsh. How about that? His Rich, own sign. If there was Rookie of the Year, he would have gotten it last year, believe me, for the best broadcaster in the, there. Okay. And, of course. Now, we don't want to leave anybody out, so... Of course, we can't leave out Tommy. You know. Well, what do you got? Let's see what we got for Tommy. Tommy, you hit a home run every single time, every year. You give excitement to that booth. So Christmas came early, guys. Put it in the booth. Enjoy it. And you're doing a great job. Keep it up. Guys, it doesn't get any better than that. You've got your own signs from Anthony, the sign guy. And we're both speechless. That's, uh, <laughs> that's big stuff. We're, we're honored, and it, it has kept us right now. It has gotten us up for this telecast even though maybe we didn't get a whole lot of sleep last night. That's one way to pump the energy up, yes, guys. See, I, right. I wanted to take care of you. I knew it was going to be tough today, so I wanted to give you something to get the adrenaline flowing. Yeah, the Red Bull and vitamin water didn't, <laughs> didn't quite do it for us. We'll send it up to the booth. We'll have, we'll have Frank bring it up to you, Tommy. <laughs> All right. 2-2 two, two misses down low. The count's 3-2. and two. Andrew Miller working with a 2 nothing lead, and let's see what he does with it. 
Scherzer who's a good hitter for a pitcher. That's like being a fast runner for a catcher. <laughs> That's, it's the old uh, adage uh, of a catcher who's a fast runner after about five or six years, he isn't a fast runner. <laughs> well, Marlins definitely need Andrew Miller to get deep into this ball game. The bullpen, as we uh, documented in the outset of the telecast, has been uh, extensively used. Dan Meyer, Kiko Calero, Leo Nunez, Matt Lindstrom. All those guys pitched in both games yesterday. Calero has pitched in all three games of this series. So he pitched in three games in two days. Brian Sanchez and Raniel Pinto both uh, saw extensive time yesterday. I know Freddie, even Leary, and, and bringing back Matt Lindstrom should this game get to a save situation. Well, what a job Burke Badenhop did last night uh, coming in and in relief of Hayden Penn. But 53 pitches for Badenhop, 70 pitches for Penn. Augie Ojeda walks. Second walk for Miller. And a visit from Mark Wiley. And he may remind him right now look, it's a 2 0 lead. We need you to go deep. Attack the strike zone. Well, here's the problem. If if all of a sudden he starts averaging 20 pitches an inning, then he's at 100 pitches after five innings. And you're and, looking at a guy that was on the disabled list. Yeah, and so you you'd like to get that pitch count down, get some quick outs, and have him go longer than five innings. Maybe not in those same words but I would imagine that could have been the subject of that conversation. Well we can always ask because Mark Wiley uh, scheduled to be on with us in the fifth inning. Write that down as question number one. What would you say to young Andrew in the third. Here's Roberts he doubled. Out of Hermita's reach. Yeah, it's an interesting uh, point in time for this Diamondback team. As players, they obviously have not performed well. It cost their manager, Bob Melvin, their job. And so now they're playing for a 34 year old, A.J. Hinch, former big league catcher who was never managed. And, you know, you probably have mixed feelings as a player. Some may have liked playing for Melvin, some may not have, but. All of them are probably, you know, in the in the last week, running through their mind the scenarios. Well, you know, he's going to be the manager for a while. He's got a four-year contract. I think it does a couple of things. Uh, years ago, with Philadelphia, Frank Lucchese began the season as the manager, and a couple of months into the season, he was let go, and Paul Owens, who was the general manager came down and managed the club the rest of the year mainly to just kind of assess the talent and figure out who he wanted to keep and who he wanted to get rid of. And I think in the case of Hinch who was the vice president of player development certainly knows all these guys and so this is a time of assessing and if you're a player on the Diamondbacks you want to play your hardest if you want to stay in the big leagues with Arizona. You, you're going to want to impress. Yeah, this is like an audition now for the next uh, five months. Here's Upton. Mark Wiley may have said whatever he said and then finished his thought with, don't throw Upton a changeup. Andrew doesn't have the best of moves. His best move is that little quick snap throw over to first base. 
It's often said of a lefty who doesn't have a good move. His best move is no move. Yeah, keep it a mystery. Fastball, and it's one and one. Well, if you're a, a Diamondbacks fan, the, the sky is the limit for this 21 year old, Justin Upton. 15 home runs last year for the, the D backs in just a little over 100 games, and off to a terrific start this year. I wonder if his brother will get his locker here in the visitor's uh, locker room. Maybe he maybe will leave him a note at least. Or he could tell the clubby, hey, my brother will get you. <laughs> yeah. BJ's been around a little longer. He'll he'll get you. He'll get you tip. <laughs> well, the Uptons, part of that group that have come out of Virginia. Mark Reynolds, one of those guys. He's a, a Virginia guy. David Wright, Ryan Zimmerman, Michael Kadire. Just thinking for the, the job that uh, Brian Greenberg and Mark Brown do down the visiting clubhouse, they should all get big tips. See the counts get too deep, even a 3 2 count uh, to the pitcher who led the inning off, Scherzer, before he flew out. 54 pitches and not yet through the third inning. Swing and a miss. He is now. So he strikes out Roberts and Upton. That after the visit from Mark Wiley. Wednesday for the first place Phillies. Now the Phillies, the world champs. And then on to New York, City Fields. Maybe the Marlins will see Johan Santana for a third time. A weekend series in New York. Here the Marlins trying to get a series split with Arizona. So the Fanatic and Mr. Met on one trip. If the Fanatic and Mr. Met were to have a cage match, who would you take? Be no contest. <laughs> fanatic. I think you're right. Mr. Met would uh, probably 
exit the cage with green fuzz all over him. Unless Mr. Met has a dark side, but he looks pretty passive. I think the fanatic could take it. Hanley looking at a fastball for strike three. Number three. Here's Cantu now. RBI single back in the first. Yeah, the Rays are here tomorrow night. 7-10 start. Saturday 7-10. Sunday 1-10. Cantu turns on a breaking ball. The Rays came back down 5-3 in the ninth. Ben Zobrist, a pinch hit two-run homer to tie it. And then Carl Crawford won it with an RBI single. And of course, Oakland is headed home to face this Arizona team. Roberts out, Upton in. And Upton makes the catch. So this weekend on Super Saturday, which is the 23rd, you've got a post-game concert with Oscar De Leon. Fireworks spectacular show as well. Game starts at 7-10. Fans get a Marlins clapper. Courtesy of Matchup Promotions, 1877 Marlins. Explaining the game, it's always good. Sometimes you might not know all the, the nuances of this game. So it's always nice to, to talk things out. I think he's talking about the uh, 11th and 12th inning of last night's doubleheader. Baker's 0 for 1. Max Scherzer was the Big 12 Pitcher of the Year in 2005 out of Missouri. And he looked like it in the third. Punched out a couple. Worked a one, two, three inning. It's a four game series. This is the fifth, the fifth appearance of the Duck. Excuse me. Who's the only player to lead the Diamondbacks in base hits three years in a row? Ah. I'll, I'll tell you a cute little story about this guy. Oh, you know the answer. I do. He's uh, he's no longer playing. But he lives in the uh, Phoenix area. 
and still remains friends with the Phoenix broadcasters, the Diamondbacks broadcasters. And was texting one of them last night saying that he would send them breakfast <laughs> if the game went any longer. So it's not Craig Council. And it's not uh, Mark Grace. Nope, nope. Mark Grace told me tonight he hated doubleheaders. He said he can remember two doubleheaders that he was a part of, and he was 0 for 10 in each one of them. <laughs> Reynolds walked back in the first and then stole his sixth base of the series. Reynolds and Ryan Zimmerman, as we told you, in that uh, Virginia infield. Ugla looks out, and uh, Hermita comes charging in. So Miller gets Reynolds. Now he's got Burns and Tracy to worry about. Hey, how about the, uh, the Jake Peavy to the White Sox rumors? Yeah, some uh, minor leaguers involved in that. It hasn't uh, come through. I think it needs the approval of Jake Peavy. He has a no trade clause. I don't think anybody's surprised with that. I think a lot of people were surprised that Jake Peavy started the season with the uh, Padres. Well, didn't he nix the uh, trade to the Braves? Yeah, the Braves had a few things happen to them. We've, we've talked about that for call. They thought they had him signed. They, they were a little bit in the A.J. Burnett hunt, and they didn't get him. I think PV is holding out until the White Sox agree to wear those camouflage uniforms at least once a year. Well, he would certainly uh, pick up some games in the standings. San Diego probably is not going to get into postseason out of that NL West. And right now, actually, the White Sox five games uh, under 500 coming into play today. And actually, more than that, the White Sox got bombarded today in Chicago 20 to 1. They were beaten by Minnesota. That matches the White Sox most lopsided loss. So not real happy over on the south side tonight. Andrew Miller uses his bare hand, flips it over, and let's hope that bare hand withstood that comebacker. to call 1877 Marooney by Checkers little place big taste by Corona the official sponsor of the timeout and by Honda South Florida visit your South Florida Honda dealers online 
at sfhondadealers.com to find a deal on fuel-efficient Hondas. Dan Ugla swings at a Max Scherzer slider. Say that a few times, a Scherzer slider. <laughs> Ugla hit a pair of home runs against John Roush. Yeah, he kind of uh, turned the tables. He'd gone into his appearances against Rouch. He'd been 0 for 7 against him. Our Toyota trend against Arizona, his old ball club, seven of his 21 hits are home runs. Not this time. Scherzer all of a sudden has dialed it up. Well, looks like both pitchers settling down a little bit. Scherzer and Andrew Miller. Scherzer has struck out four of the last five he's faced. Boy, the Yankees continue to roll. Six nothing over Baltimore. Boy, they've been scoring uh, early and often. That's in the fourth. Boston shutting out Toronto four nothing in the fourth. We'll start paying a little more attention to American League East teams as we head towards June. Because the Marlins will uh, see everybody in the East. Baltimore, the Yankees. Boston, Toronto, and of course the Rays are here this weekend. A win by Boston uh, tonight, they would pull within a half game of the Blue Jays. Yankees trying to make it nine in a row. Cody swings and misses at that changeup. Side corner. Oh my goodness. Scherzer, five of six now, he has struck out. Well, all of a sudden, he's found some control, and we told you about the stuff he has, so he starts piling up the strikeouts. He had an 11 strikeout performance last year at Dodger Stadium. Yeah, they obviously see big things out of him in the future. Here's Coughlin. His major league debut was in relief back in April of last year, and he came in and dazzled. He struck out seven in four and a third innings against Houston. He had no hits, seven strikeouts. Four and a third, pretty good. Oh, you start to get that change up over. Yeah, you start uh, gearing yourself, getting ready for the fastball. Okay, here comes the heat, and he throws a nice change up. That's when you watch a young pitcher if he can perfect his three pitches and then have the kind of stuff that Scherzer has. And he will be a good one. Here's his 3 2. Another change. Strikes out the side. Six of the last seven he's faced. He's punched out.
time to say hi to Cookie and Raul. Andrew Miller lanzando. Y vamos a saludar a Rich y a Tommy. Cookie. Hi, guys. Hi, Rich and Tommy. Fellas, guys? what's going on? Not much. Cookie, uh, can you give Freddie an inning or two in relief? <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you what. We're not going to need it tonight. I think he's pitching great right now. I hope that he can stand himself. That would be fantastic. Good command on his fastball and slider and throwing strikes. And that's what all he has to do. He's got this stuff to be successful. Did you guys get your rest last night, both of you? <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> no doubt. That was a long night. And I'm sure in your long career, Cookie, you were involved in a, uh, a long doubleheader. No question. We right. finished one game sometime with uh, the Chicago Cubs in Cincinnati at 3.30 in the morning. Mm -hmm. Wow. Because they never call any game off in Cincinnati, as you well know, Tom. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> El Ponche. All right, guys. Have a good night. show. You too, guys. All right, fellas. That, that's true what... Uh, Cookie was saying as you check the uh, Firestone strikeout leaders. But there were certain ballparks, a lot of those AstroTurf ballparks, Philadelphia being one, Veterans Stadium, Riverfront. There always was a window. So you'd wait forever because they'd always say, well, there's a window. It's uh, about, you know, about 11 o'clock. Think you can get it in. Think the game will be played. They used to have those Zambonis that would run oh, out and suck yeah. the water. Uh huh. Chris Young struck out in the second. And as Tommy documented, it, it's been a tough series for the young center fielder. 0 for 4 with four strikeouts in the first game last night. Swing and a miss there. I tell you what, it's fun watching Andrew Miller when he gets in a rhythm and he's using that changeup. He has that live arm. There's the changeup again. All of a sudden, both young pitchers finding that third pitch, the changeup. Outside corner. Wow. Down goes Young again. Enter the duck. One of our favorite guys, I suspect, is the answer to this. And a World Series hero in Diamondbacks history, Gonzo. Scherzer with a big cut. Notice Andrew has a much better pace out there, too. Getting it, tempo's picked up. He's in a nice rhythm. Don't waste anything. Put him away right here. There you go. He does. Baker throws him out. Andrew Miller strikes out the side. As both starters are clicked in.
a, a, a weapon for him and, uh, and a good one. Mark, in, in 15 or 20 seconds, can you give us a snapshot on the two new arms uh, that you have in your bullpen in, in Dave Davidson and uh, Christian Martinez? Uh, well, Christian, uh, he's been starting, doing a really good job for our double-A club club. Uh, he's a command guy with a, with about an average fastball in and out. He moves it around well. Uh, above average changeup and uh, and a slider that has some tilt to it. So uh, and he's a strike thrower. And Davis is pretty much a left-handed guy with a sinker, changeup and slider. And he uh, he also throws strikes. So that's that's that they're they're uh, known for. So hopefully it will happen here at the big league level. All right, Mark. Thanks for the visit and uh, good luck tonight the rest of the way with your starter Andrew Miller. Thanks a lot. All right, Mark Wiley, the pitching coach of the Marlins. Andrew Miller bounces out, hit it pretty well, and he uh, kind of breaks that streak of strikeouts. Scherzer had struck out four in a row. Miller himself has struck out three in a row. Yeah, Scherzer right now has retired eight straight, so he's got his rhythm going well. And Andrew Miller has retired eight in a row. It's going to be interesting as we've told you all night the two main arms that uh, Freddie has in the bullpen are those two guys we just talked about Christian Martinez and Dave Davidson because of the doubleheader and the long game last night the extended game in the first game of the series who would you close with because Martinez has been starting so that's I mean, you're, you're asking a guy to make his big league debut and come in. And I, I don't think it would be one of those two guys, one of the new new arms to close. So you think a, a Sanchez? I think there's still a possibility that it could be Lindstrom, but I think if not, it would be Brian Sanchez. Bonifacio beats it. So he's aboard with one out here in the fifth. Our Hyundai Road ahead. The Rays series will be on Fox Sports Florida all weekend, Friday night, Saturday night, and Sunday. Tommy and I will be on sabbatical, and we'll be back with you on Monday in Philadelphia. And then Tuesday's game is in high definition. Nice to see Bonifacio over the last few games get some bump base hits, and he's dropped down some beauties. For me, it is one for two. Yeah, Jeremy, overall, just having a terrific homestand. You go back the entire homestand, 11 for his last 26. This is a spot where if you're Bonifacio and you're a base stealer, theirs is a base right there. There's a base you want to steal right now. Yeah, I think with certain left-handed hitters, you want to leave that hole open, but not, not so much the case with Jeremy Hermita. He's running, and Hermita pulls it. Yeah, he got, a, he got a, a pitch in that he could turn on. But generally, you don't see him take that approach. Bonifacio, he has fun. Of course, he knows a lot of these Arizona players. <laughs> oh, and two at time. Got to change up the pole. Marlins, a single run in the first, another run in the second. Three of the Marlins' five hits have not left the infield.
One and two. With the struggles of Cameron Maven, the Jeremy Herbita in left field move has been suspended. He's now out in right field. That's not to say that if Cameron Maven continues to swing it well in Triple A, that the Marlins wouldn't bring him back up and realign that outfield. Absolutely. And I think the organization feels that. If he is, continues to play well, which he is, he sat out a couple of games with a little little injury, nothing serious. If he continues to play well, then I think he will be back here. Bonifacio runs, it's popped up. Reynolds, Burns. Two down. Family Sunday finishes off the homestand. The Rays and Marlins at 110. Josh Johnson cap day. Courtesy of the Sun Sentinel, 1877 Marlins. Or visit Marlins.com. Hanley's got the dirty uniform, but still looking for a base hit. 0 for 2, but he has a stolen base and he's scored a run. So 0 for his last 11. Did have a couple of hits in the first game of this series, one of them a home run. Get the home run off John Garland. But Arizona won that game 5 3. And of course, in the very first game of this series, he was 0 for 2, but that got washed out. That was when the rain came in the fourth inning on Monday night. I think Bonifacio is going to try to get in scoring position. I think one game in this series we saw them put Hanley on intentionally and pitched to Cantu, but their thinking may change having watched Cantu swing in those situations. And having watched Hanley swing in this series. Yeah. That's what I think is a big part of advanced scouting reports about players. Some players are hot, some players are struggling. So it doesn't matter the, the stature of that player, but if he's in a in a bad spell, you might want to go right after him. And that's why advanced reports that are three weeks to a month old oftentimes don't do you a whole lot of good. There he goes. Ojeda throws him out. So Max Scherzer is through five innings. Both young starters throwing well tonight.
right now shutting down the Diamondbacks on just one hit a Ryan Roberts double. Roberts is due up second here in the sixth top of the order. Some changes Wes Helms is at third base and Emilio Bonifacio goes from third base and is out in center field. And we'll have to we'll have to get a report on Cody Ross because you certainly Freddie wouldn't make this move with the short bench that he has. Now he only has Glode and Paulino left. He wouldn't make this move unless he he had to. And because these disabled Alfredo Amezaga, he didn't have a lot of experience in center field. Hanley fires the first in time. We check in with Frank Ford. Frank. All right, guys, uh, sitting up here with a couple of the Jupiter Hammerheads. They had a 10.30 a.m. game this morning. Matt Dominguez, the first-round draft pick oh, from a couple of years ago. What about those early games? What time do you guys get to the ballpark? Ooh, uh, we get there around 9 o'clock. You know, it's pretty tough to wake up uh, 8 o'clock when you're usually waking up around 12 o'clock every day. So uh, definitely a little adjustment, but it's nice to get an early game in every once in a while. one one nothing today, and uh, a lot of you guys making the jump from low A to high A, and it's... It's quite an adjustment, isn't it? Yeah, you know, pitching's better. You know, just overall playing's better. So, I mean, uh, playing last year in Greensboro, you know, it's Hitters Park. Playing Jupiter now, it's a little different. But just got to adjust, you know, and uh, everybody's better. So, uh, just got to go and get better every day. Being here at the game, are you picturing yourself in a couple years being here? Hopefully. You know, this is uh, pretty cool to come watch us and, uh, you know, uh, hopefully be here one day. All right. Big drive to center field. Rich, I'll take it back after this. All right, let's see if Bonifacio can run it down. He can't, and it bounces over the wall. And it's going to be a, a double. Guys, you know how we like to dig out the good stories? On my right is Hunter Mintz from the Hammerheads. He was actually a college and Team USA roommate of Max Scherzer. So what's your bets, Max Scherzer story? Um, if you look close at Max, <clears throat> he's got... Uh, He's what you call a dicro. Is there's it's some kind of long word, but it's just we just call him dicro. He has uh, one blue eye and one brown eye, <clears throat> and he loves to uh, play tricks on people, tell people all about it, and uh, so he go he'll go on and on about that. And they've done numerous stories about him and his eyes, and so he just kind of ran with it. All right, see guys, you, you don't get that information anywhere else. <laughs> That's right? good stuff, right? <laughs> all right, thanks a lot, <laughs> guys. Good luck. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Here is Upton after the double by Ryan Roberts. Roberts has two doubles. And wouldn't you know, you, you put Bonifacio, he has to go out to play center field and gets tested on a, a very tough play directly over his head. I don't know if he could have caught it, but he gets tested right away. And we know that Bonifacio has played a little bit of left field. He did that in spring training. But center field is a vastly different deal than left field. Cody Ross left the ball game with a migraine headache. Tough to play this game at this level with a migraine headache. Ross was one for two in the game. Well, this is a spot for Andrew Miller, and you know, it's been this way for almost the last three weeks. The Marlins will get a lead, and then Oftentimes with just one swing a team will come back it happened to the Marlins in the second game yesterday and in the first game of this series Upton was the culprit well, three run homer yeah. in the third and of course the three run shot in the 12th and we talked about the troubles in this series in particular the Marlins have had in the seventh inning. Now here we are in the sixth. But the Diamondbacks have scored 10 runs in the seventh inning in this series. Outside corner. Upton doesn't like the call. But Miller with another strikeout. Of course, like freeze cam time. What shall we freeze tonight? Should I catch it? Ouch. Good thing the fingers weren't uh, in the way. Andrew Miller showing no ill effects of that play. It's a cross route, course like Freeze Camp. 
Well, it's, it's been a year for Andrew this year where he has not gone deep into games. So the point in time of this game is the longest he's pitched this year. And he's at seven strikeouts. His career high in strikeouts is nine. And you know what? It was last May against Arizona. Reynolds is 0 for 1. Reynolds home runs in this series have come at big times. And he's homered in every day of this series, not in every game. On Tuesday night, and in the second game, he hit two last night. Talking about Andrew against the uh, Diamondbacks, he came into this game a couple of career starts against Arizona, one and one, but a nice 2.13 ERA in those two starts. And I mentioned the career high nine strikeouts last year in a game against Arizona. It's outside, it's two and one. What a boost it would be to have Andrew Miller, a successful Andrew Miller, in the rotation. It would take a load of pressure off of the shoulders of Josh Johnson and Chris Volstead. A couple of guys who probably inwardly have put a little pressure on themselves because they know the state of the pitching staff. So it's good to see Chris Bolstad get the win in game one. There's a good change up again. Baker out to talk to Volstad. Or rather, to Miller. Volstad and Johnson, as we said, the kind of the anchors. Of oh, the rotation. Volstead will not throw in the upcoming series. It'll be Nolasco at this point tomorrow night. The Marlins have yet to decide who's going to start Saturday's game against Jeff Neiman. And JJ will go on Sunday against James Shields. Ground ball that sneaks in there and down the line. The Diamondbacks are on the board. Reynolds. Having a great series, an RBI single, first run for Arizona. Now, a nice inning by Mark Reynolds. Hit that ball well to pick up his teammate Ryan Roberts. Yeah, it looks like Chris Volstad will start the first game in Philadelphia. A Memorial Day game, a Memorial Day night game in Philly. Good hitting by Reynolds. Eric Burns. Now the guy at first is the guy who's stolen all the bases. Uh, six steals in this series. It's going to be interesting to see where he finishes the year. In stolen bases. Is he uh, going to be a David Wright type and, and swipe 25, 30? The way he's run in this series, he, he looks like he could be. Burns hitting just 212 right now. The Diamondbacks hoping that before his contract is up, he can snap back to his uh, 2007 form. When he hit 286, 21 homers, 50 stolen bases, 83 driven in, played hard, fan favorite. But last year, just 52 games, injuries to both hamstrings. Shows you how hard it is as a general manager to pull the trigger on a deal like that. 
because track record wise Burns had a pretty good one you know productive years in Oakland yeah and and injury injury wise he's been pretty good and so they signed him after that 07 season to a three year thirty million dollar contract. You'll hear some general managers say that those are the deals not the you know the big 80 90 million dollar ones those are the ones where it can really affect your franchise if it doesn't work out. Struck him out. Andrew Miller gives up a run but keeps the lead. Bottom of the six coming up. Fish Speed with the AT&T Rapid Rewind. AT&T, the nation's fastest 3G network. AT&T, your world delivered. Lots of Andrew Miller, lots of Max Scherzer. And it's Scherzer's turn. He comes up and into Cantu, Baker, Ugla to follow. 2 1 game. <laughs> 2 0. Cantu's RBI single was in the first. 35 RBIs now. I think you kind of get that feel tonight on on both sides, both teams. Just the the energy level just down some after the the long night yesterday, and understandably so. Well, you play uh, over eight hours of baseball and get back to either your home or, in the Diamondbacks' case, their hotel, three o'clock in the morning. Neither team took batting practice on the field. Oof, and you know, if you're the Marlins, a lot of the guys with young families, those uh, those little kids, they they don't know that you played eight hours and you played until two in the morning. There are some of the uh, the numbers, the combined time for the games, eight hours, seven minutes. There's about 20, 25 minutes in between. All the hits, all the runs, all the pitchers used. Baker takes a strike. And that's the thing. The, the, the number of pitchers used, there are guys in that total. That it doesn't really do justice to the type of night last night. 
that uh, say a Kiko Calero had, a Lindstrom, a Nunez, a Meyer, who worked in both games. Calero's worked in all three games of the series. Oh, there are a number of untouchables on Freddie's list. And, and there are a few on A.J. Hinch's, too. Max Scherzer. Impressive stuff. Nine strikeouts for Max Scherzer. We told you that his career high is 11. His season high, you're looking at it. He was dialed in his last start, too. He, he threw six shutout innings in Atlanta. I think we talked about it in the uh, scouting report how with his delivery he, he just has a way a natural way of hiding the ball so you know you combine some good stuff that he has with being hard to pick up and that's a pretty good formula. The blue eyed brown eyed one. <laughs> that's a great story. You also get a sense that you've got two young starters whose managers when they gave him the ball tonight said kid I need as much mm -hmm. as you've got. So that tells me something about both these guys tonight. They've uh, taken the challenge. Hugel gets into that one center field and deep young goes back looking up. Gone. His name is Dan Ugla. and speaking of challenges. Scherzer figured he'd try to challenge him with that good fastball. You cannot get the fastball by Dan Ugly. And he loves doing it against the Diamondbacks. There's the fastball. He's got the kind of power. He doesn't have to go to a short part of the field. He can go straight away center. And a little quick fist pump when he saw that ball clear the wall. So is Ugla officially out of his slide? I, you know, I would think so. It sure looks like it the way he swung the bat. You know, he's hit some balls, a couple of balls to the right side of the diamond. That's always a good sign. He's and then the home runs he's hit. He's homered in uh, all three of his last three games. There is Clay Zavada with a, uh, a Bill Hahn type. Mustache. Boy, that is a, an all time. That was, that was like the Volstash gang the other night. Looks like out of the movie Tombstone. I was going to say Butch Cassidy, and but you're right. It looks like Doc Holliday and, and not the right hander with the Blue Jays. <laughs> not Doc Holliday. Zavada's getting ready. Helms with his first at bat. Remember, he came in when Cody left with a migraine headache. Take your face, Max Scherzer was cruising. He had struck out nine, including the first two of this sixth inning. And then Ugla sent one of his fastballs about 415 feet to center field. Kind of uh, something that went unnoticed in the game last night because of all the other things in that uh, 12th inning after the debacle in the 11th. 
when the Diamondbacks took the lead, the big base hit by Chris Coughlin that tied the game and got the Marlins back in it. That was after the Diaz double and the Burns error. In the East tonight, the Phillies won today. They got another homer from the pride of Sunset High School, Raul Ibanez. 12 to 5, they won in Cincinnati. Mets open play, a game back. And the Mets are. Idle tonight after being swept in Los Angeles. The Mets uh, now have lost four straight. Atlanta game over 500 and a game and a half behind Philadelphia when it started. They have their hands full with Colorado. Aaron Cook is shutting out the Braves 7 0 in the sixth. Washington is down 4 3 to Pittsburgh in the eighth. Despite a home run by A. LaRoche, your guess is as good as mine. There's a strike. So Scherzer ends up striking out the side, but Dan Ugla redirects a 95 mile an hour fastball and hits it out. Three one ball game after the ugly home run. Man, you can eat and drink all you want for one low price. All you can eat seats, get your fill of hot dogs, peanuts, nachos, soft drinks, and more from the comfort of your club seats. Next, all you can eat night is coming up. It's coming up tomorrow night. 305 626 save. Chad Tracy swings and misses. Tracy's 0 for 2. And he shoots one foul and out of play. Now you forget how, how quickly and how nice that solo home run is. There's the uh, youngster, Christian Martinez, with a good change up. He has a little sinker to go along with it. But you forget how quickly and you get that one run back on the home run by Dan Ugla. So. Instead of a one run game, just like that, it's back to a two run game. We talked to Mark Wiley in the fifth inning, and of course, as uh, few are with us, you know that after a walk in the third, Wiley trotted out to the mound and he said, Tempo, Andrew, tempo. 
Let's get it rolling. And since that time, the tempo has been outstanding. The student listened. Oh. And the tempo has been there with the breaking ball, with the changeup, and the fastball. Look at that. Strikeout number nine for Andrew Miller. Number one, James. So that ties a career high. Yes, it does. We talked about it last uh, last year against these Diamondbacks back in May. So very close, May 22nd last year. Here we are, May 20th, or what are we, 21st tonight. See, I've, I've lost track of dates, too. <laughs> it's a, it has been a, uh, a strange week. Snyder fouls it back. Miller at 105 pitches now. A couple walks to go with those nine strikeouts. His 0 2. Drive to left. That ball's hit and hit well. And Snyder. Has erased that ugly home run, and it's back to being a one-run game. You know, it's amazing. It's uh, Snyder's second home run of the series, but it's also another home run that Arizona's hit on a changeup. We saw Justin Upton hit a couple of changeups very deep last night, and this changeup waited on nicely. Not a great changeup as far as location. And Snyder took care of the rest. So here is Young, who was struck out twice in this game. And he puts it in play for the first time in this series. Hanley's calling for it, and he makes the catch. Diamondbacks get one back. That uh, Snyder home run, a one run game. Scherzer's spot is due up. And it's going to be Gerardo Parra. That we saw a lot of the young Venezuelan in the double header. He has shown a nice ability to swing the bat. We've talked about how he's given. A.J. Hinch a nice little dimension at the top of the order with his speed. Was hitting over 360 at the time of his call up. Diamondbacks not only have a, a deeper bench but they've got some starters on that bench and even though Parra is new to the big leagues in the last uh, week he's been starting. Ever since he got here, fastballs up. Steven Drew getting the night off. Felipe Lopez as well. Miller trying to get through this seventh. Well, another run for the Diamondbacks in the seventh inning. 11 runs in this series. They have scored in the seventh inning. And your point last night was a great one. The focus in the bullpen oftentimes is the eighth inning guy, then the closer. But the seventh inning is where a lot of games are won and lost. It's been the case in this series. Ugla. Little flip. Miller gives up a long ball to Snyder. But finishes the seventh. Up a run.
especially if you like good fastball. Well, we'll start with a couple of 24-year-old pitchers. Scherzer and Andrew Miller have been outstanding. Each has used a good fastball and changeup and occasionally the breaking ball. Scherzer with 10 strikeouts and Miller with nine. How about Dan Oka? Straight away center field. Whoa, how about Chris Snyder? A changeup. He hits it a long way. His fourth of the year. But it's been a good pitching matchup tonight. It's going to change a little bit for the Diamondbacks. They bring in Clay Zavada, one of the two pitchers that they brought up uh, for this game tonight. And in the double switch, Gerardo Parra stays in the game. He'll bat ninth play in center field. And Zavada hits in the number eight spot. Major League debut for Clay Zavada, who is in Mobile at double A. Andrew Miller is hitting. This doesn't mean that he'll be pitching. However, no one is warming up in the bullpen. But you're right, because of the lack of bench players, Freddie has to really be careful. He's already had to use Wes Helms because Cody Ross left with a migraine headache. We saw Martinez up. He's loose. Miller shortens the butt, takes down low. Zavada out of Southern Illinois. Southern Illinois University at Edwardsville. Will pop up. And it just lands beyond the screen. Yes, a lot of not a high draft pick, 30th round pick. Kind of an interesting upbringing. Yeah, he's uh, his father passed away in 2006. And Zavada had to quit the game and go back to the family farm because his mother had passed away when he was a youngster. And Zavada had to tend to the 40 acre property and uh, take care of uh, his family. And Frank, you've got more on this left hander. Yeah, actually, guys, that's true. He quit in 07. He actually took some college classes to finish his degree. In addition to take care of the farm, he delivered furniture to make ends meet, gave pitching lessons on Sunday, came back to the game in 08, had a very good year in single A and double A, and now the call up here. Now, that's the serious part of the story. Here's the mustache part of the story. In South Bend last year, they had a mustache appreciation night, and he decided to start growing the mustache then, and he has kept it ever since, which is why it is as big as it is. And as you guys mentioned earlier, I think he would fit in absolutely perfectly with the Volstash fans that we saw in game one of yesterday's doubleheader. And Frank, he had to win that mustache appreciation night, I would think. Well, uh, you know what? I don't know if he had it grown out as much at that time, but he'd <laughs> certainly win it now. He'd be the odds on favorite. Well, here's another theory. He pitched so well in South Bend. He was 3 and 1 with an 051 ERA in 24 appearances. Maybe that's why he kept the mustache. You know how players are. If it's working, don't change it. That's right. Zavada. Got to be a thrill for him after all he's been through. Well, nice change up there that last pitch. And you know, once again, you you see some players with with an opportunity because of the situation the Diamondbacks are in. An opportunity to get up here, pitch, and show what he can do. He strikes out Bonifacio, who had a couple hits tonight. Two for four now is Bonifacio, and up comes Hermida. So a couple of uh, change-ups, those last two pitches to Bonifacio. Can you be a left-hander and a reliever and not throw a change-up? <laughs> I think that's in the standard player agreement or, or not have something funky about you. You got to have the hat a little crooked. And there's our answer. With Martinez throwing. It looks like he will come in and pitch in the eighth inning. Again, if you've just joined us, the Marlins had to do a couple of things to get some arms for this game and for this weekend after what's happened over the last three days. Swing and a miss. And looks like we're about to see the Major League debut of Christian Martinez.
you by Just for Men Hair Color. Marlon Hold leaders, Dan Meyer and Leo Nunez, adding to their total yesterday. Just as middle relievers keep their team in the game, you two can stay in the game with Just for Men Hair Color. All right, so Andrew Miller went seven, and now Martinez, who has been outstanding as a starter at Double A Jacksonville, makes his major league debut in a one-run game in the eighth inning. Yeah, and this uh, was his day to throw, so he should have a, a few bullets in in that gun ready to go. And what he features is a fastball, 87 to 90, with uh, some good sink to it. He has a very good changeup, and we were told he throws strikes. Now he's not a kid, 27 years old, but he's been around. He, he actually came up in the Tigers organization. He was selected from the Tigers in the uh, Rule 5 draft back in December of 06. That the minor league version of the Rule 5 draft. And so a pleasant surprise, I think, this year, getting rewarded for his performance and now being turned to in a tight spot. And he comes in and he faces Stephen Drew. Drew pinch hitting for Augie Ojeda. There's that changeup after a pretty good fastball, the first pitch. Here's the 0-2. Runs that outside. Drew getting the night off. Freddie and Mark Wiley both wa watching and certainly hoping Martinez gets it out. So a good way to start this big league career. And he's the kind of guy that because he's been starting and because this was the day that he would have taken his regular turn that if he has a nice inning I would expect because he'd be comfortable out there you would send him back out there for the ninth inning. Of course, the Marlins are still mulling over who's going to start on Saturday. I think with the effort of Burke Badenhop last night, three and two-thirds innings, is that enough time for Badenhop to come back and start yeah, Saturday? I, I think if you did that, you'd, you'd be piecing a game together again with four, five, six pitchers. If Martinez throws just one inning tonight, could you bring him back and start him on Saturday? Possible, but you know what? You at this point in a one-run game, if, in my opinion, this is my right. opinion. You, you know, you're not looking at Saturday. If he's comfortable, you leave him in there and you close out this game. And then when Saturday comes around, you worry about Saturday. <laughs> Got a little style to uh, it. I like your thought. It's a good thought. Right. Well, but. Uh, you, you have to take advantage if you have a chance to win one here. You go ahead and go for it. Well, the other alternative of the, you know the two guys that Freddie has said that he's going to first, Dave Davidson, who is a lefty, a deceptive lefty from New Orleans. Davidson has a brief stint in the big leagues. He's pitched all of two innings in the big leagues in 07 with Pittsburgh. Oh, how about this? Martinez finishes off Ryan Roberts. So far, so good for Christian Martinez. He has shown a changeup. He's shown a little two-seamer, low 90s, and a good slider to get the strikeout. His first as a major leaguer. Yeah, most of Davidson's appearances have been as a reliever. So he's more suited for that bullpen. Well, here's Upton, and the Marlins so far have handled him. He's 0 for 3. He struck out twice. But don't throw him a changeup out over the plate. Jeff Conine on Marlins Live opened our telecast tonight talking about the number of upper deck home runs 
that he is accustomed to seeing in a season in this ballpark. Niner said, yeah, you'll see two or three. It used to be when he played. He said, I don't think he's ever seen a guy go up there like this in the same game. And both change up. Hayden Penn, Leo Nunez, and two upper deck shots off change up. So that's supplying most of the power himself. And not only upper deck shots, left center upper deck shots. Well, he's gotten ahead. 0 and 2. Let's see what he's thinking about putting him away with. Showing pretty good composure for his major league debut. Now the Dominican Republic. I know we first, uh, Rich, heard his name. I think it was back when Graham Taylor came up to pitch. We, we heard a, a number of names, three or four names, and his was one of them. Well, we knew that the Marlins needed a starter, so we started scouring both triple A and double A to see which starters were doing well and we looked for a lot of the you know the names sink bile west and then his name popped up and it was like whoa look at his numbers but I think he had just pitched and it, it didn't work out timing wise for him to make a start yeah I think that's another thing you have to understand when a when a team needs a starter from the minors you can't just call up and say send this guy because if the guy you want has just pitched and you need a starter tomorrow that doesn't work. He loses Upton. Now he has to face a dangerous and hot Mark Reynolds. And make sure that Upton doesn't get a big lead and jump from first base. Reynolds now with 21 RBIs to go with 11 home runs. He entered the series. With just eight homers and 16 RBIs. And it seems like all of his home runs have been big ones in this series. Drive to left center and deep. Bonifacio looking up. It's gone. Another big home run by Mark Reynolds. Well, it almost looked like he stepped up there and said, okay, I'm going to sit on a slider. And if I get the slider, I'm going to hit it a long way. And I'll tell you what, Mark Reynolds has had an unbelievable series. Here comes the slider, and it stayed middle of the plate. Martinez didn't get it away from him. You hate to leave something in that area. Obviously, he didn't do it on purpose. But for a guy who has that kind of power, something he can pull in that area. And the Marlins lead is gone. Here's Burns. Burns turns on one. That's a foul ball. And also the opportunity for Andrew Miller who pitched so well tonight. Andrew Miller. Equaled his career high in innings pitched. And in strikeouts, seven innings and had nine strikeouts. But a chance now for him to get the win has gone by the wayside. One and two. Strikes him out. That's where he wanted to put the slider to Reynolds. Reynolds put that slider in the seats.
Home Depot doing more on defense. Nice pick to get a speedy Eric Burns. Well, both bullpens are thin. Both managers have turned to guys to make their major league debuts. Steven Drew stays in the game. He's at shortstop. The Marlins saw Clay Zavada in the seventh. They're going to see more of the mustachioed one here in the eighth. Hanley Ramirez, Jorge Cantu, and John Baker. And A.J. Hinch is sauntering out to the mound. And maybe the Marlins won't see Clay Zavada. Let's see who Hinch summons from his pen. He has a, a little more flexibility, but a couple of guys that he probably would stay away from, Rauch and Rosales. So a pitching change to open up the bottom of the eighth. 4-3, Arizona on top. Arbaruni's called to the bullpen. Standing. Nine strikeouts, seven innings. Check out the new R Performance Vehicles at your local Jaguar dealer or on JaguarUSA.com. Hanley takes a fastball up from Tony Pena. You know what, Rich? The way we've seen the Marlins against soft tossing lefties, you almost like to see a hard thrower such as Pena come in the game. Who has good numbers. Hanley rips it down the left field line into the corner it goes racing round first burns into the corner this time he keeps it in play and Hanley's got himself a double well you get a righty who throws hard that was a breaking ball but it just seems like the Marlins have better swings than guys like this there's a hanging slider nice swing by Hanley Ramirez our checkers double of the game into that left field corner and a good way to start the bottom of the eighth inning. Here is Cantu. RBI single. Jorge has his own fan section right behind home plate. Cantu, the type of hitter. He leads the Marlins in RBIs, but he is not uh, above just trying to put a ball in play on the right side. We've seen him do that, and we've seen him be successful and get a base hit sometimes. Hard to do, though, when they keep pounding you inside with fastballs. Not that time. It's the way they've worked in this series, though. You know, in spots like this, if you watch Cantu's feet at the plate, because he knows they're going to try to bust him inside. You can almost watch him creep a little bit outside. Take a little few 
half steps back in the box. Move off the plate. Good snapper there. And it's two and one. Well, that's a, just a, a great professional hitter. I mean, he, he makes adjustments. He goes up to the plate with a game plan. Pena has worked every night of this series, though only once last night. There came that inside fastball, and it's two and two now. Yeah, I, I did have a brief conversation with A.J. Hinch, and he said Rauch and Rosales uh, more than likely because they worked in both games of the uh, doubleheader. Here's Doug Slayton. Marlins down a run. Ooh, got a pretty good pitch to go that way. Hard fastball away from him. John Baker next. Roberts trying to keep Hanley close at second. Swing into shallow right, Upton on, makes the catch. Hanley bluffs. <laughs> That's a pretty good arm there from Justin Upton. And so Baker comes up now with one out. Both starters looked really good. I mean, Max Scherzer in six innings, 109 pitches, 10 strikeouts, two walks. Andrew Miller, seven innings, 112 pitches. Nine strikeouts, two walks, exactly what both managers wanted out of their young starter. And now the game's in the hands of the bullpen. And right now the Diamondbacks' bullpen is deeper than the Marlins' pen. Little broken bat. Burns comes on. Two down. And it's ugly. Remember as well that the Diamondbacks were rained out on Sunday. And so nobody pitched on Sunday, and neither bullpen had to work in Monday's game, which was shortened and stopped in the fourth inning. Yeah, the Marlins uh, on Sunday against the Dodgers. That was at John Caranca start just two and two thirds innings. Hayden Penn, two and a third. Batenhop, two and a third. Pinto, two thirds. And Calero, an inning. Ugla in his career against Pena. And of course, he's homered in this game. Ugla has homered in three consecutive games. But Hanley's still out at second with two outs. Nasty pitch. And that's a pitch if it's 0-1 you don't swing at because there isn't much you can do with it. Pitch you hope you don't see again. Because <laughs> you know you probably aren't going to hit it too well. Ugla hit a fastball out to straightaway center off of Scherzer in the sixth. A Mark Reynolds home run. What else has given Arizona a one run lead, a two run shot off of Christian? Martinez making his major league debut. One 
one two. Got that slider again and he put it in that same spot on the black. Ugly goes down. Marlins go to the ninth down four three. Tony Pena right now and the Arizona Diamondbacks feeling pretty good about themselves for the one run lead in the ninth inning uh, the fourth game of this series and right now the Diamondbacks have their closer up Chad Qualls Martinez his second inning Tracy takes a strike. Chad Tracy is 0 for 3. Cantu. Martinez in that eighth got the first two men out. As you see Qualls hydrating. But then he walked up to and Reynolds was sitting on a slider and got it first pitch and hit it to the deepest part of the ballpark and hit it out. There are no ballparks that will keep Mark Reynolds in. He's got uh, big time power. Snyder's home run a big one as well. That came in the seventh against Andrew Miller. The Marlins had just added to their lead and stretched it to 3 1 on the Ugla homer when Snyder bopped one, his fourth of the season. And he sends this to right. Hermito lost it, and it kicks out of his glove. It goes as a base hit. Not an easy play. He's right there. I don't think he lost it. I think he just misplayed it. It'll be a base hit. He doesn't blink. He doesn't look like it got lost in the lights. He just didn't catch it, but it'll be a single. John Garland is coming up here. And Garland. And this is an indication that you're going to move the runner. Yep. He's up there to try to bunt. And it was fouled off. One of the stories of the tragedy yesterday was that general manager Josh Burns and the manager A.J. Hinch both offered to Scott Schoenweiss to have 
John Garland, a close friend of Sean Weiss, fly with him back to Phoenix. And of course, uh, Sean Weiss's wife dying suddenly yesterday. Sean Weiss declined. Said he wanted to make that flight by himself, thought he would be okay. First time for John Garland as a pinch hitter. Pops it up. And it's foul. squares foul ball and so he strikes out and up comes para and here come the rays off there a come from behind win today ben zobrist with a uh, dramatic home run to tie it in the ninth the rays and the marlins for three games tomorrow night saturday night and a Sunday afternoon, Shields versus JJ. And then it doesn't get any easier for the Marlins. After that game, they'll head up to Philadelphia to play the uh, first place Phillies three game series. Then on to uh, New York for a weekend series against the Mets. It doesn't get any easier in June as well. Road trips to Toronto and Boston. Yankees are here. Got to go over to uh, St. Pete to see the Rays. The Brewers are here for a four game series. Marlins have seen them. And they have been impressive. The Brewers have. Yeah, the Brewers are here for that four games after the uh, weekend series against the Mets when the uh, Marlins come home. Two and one to par. Ground ball by the diving over into right field. And Hermita picks it up. Here's Stephen Drew. So Freddie hoping that Martinez can finish this inning and keep it at a one run game. Drew was the first man that faced Martinez in the eighth. And of course, you have John Baker back there handling Martinez, trying to keep the rookie right there. Give him encouragement, having never caught him before. There's a nice two seamer on the corner. Boy, Aaron Cook threw a four hit shutout at the Braves in Atlanta. Boy, he, he works fast, too, doesn't he? He threw 108 <laughs> pitches and struck out just three. I suspect a few ground balls in that game. He's had. We had that note when we were in Denver. He's had a couple of complete games. I think one game he threw 79 pitches, one he threw 78. Troy Tulowitzki was back in the lineup for the uh, Rockies. He had to spend some time on the bench. He looked pretty good against the Marlins. The pitch. Baker moved inside at the last moment. Drew strikes out. Marlins need a run in the ninth against Chad Qualls.
Baseball and Sun Sports is brought to you by Geico. 15 minutes could save you 15% on car insurance. Visit us at geico.com or call 1 800 947 Auto. Buy Tobacco Free Florida for more information. Visit us on the web at tobaccofreeflorida.com. And by Canon, the all new Rebel T1i, now shooting in full HD video, inspired by Canon. Down a run, bottom of the ninth. Rough Jack Qualls, the closer for the Diamondbacks, will be in. He'll be facing Helms, Coughlin, and most likely Ross Glode, pinch hitting for the pitcher. Qualls worked last night. And he also worked on Tuesday. Qualls worked at 11th inning. Remember he came in with runners at first and third and bailed his manager and his ball club out of that jam by getting two ground balls to second base. Then he pitched the 12th as well and in that 12th inning the Marlins got a run an RBI single by Chris Coughlin who's on deck. Balls would end up getting the win. He got the save on Tuesday. He's out in front, one and two. Good power sinker when he's on. He's got a lot of hard stuff down in the strike zone. Strikes out Helms. Snyder throws him out, and there's one down here in the ninth. Coglin now. It has been a tough go of it for Coughlin since that opening series in Milwaukee. Zero and one. I think pitchers have mixed it up well against him. Every once in a while, they'll bust a pitch inside, change speeds. I think we've seen him get a little anxious swing at some pitches out of the strike zone which is natural and normal for a, a young hitter making the adjustments up here. He went. Qualls has a pair of strikeouts. To open the nine, so three strikeouts for Coughlin in this game. Here's Glode. Takes outside. Claude as a pinch hitter, six for 19. He and Wes Helms have been a productive pair. Helms has seven pinch hits. Both have driven in four runs as pinch hitters. Two and all. Load pretty good low ball hitter. See if he gets that sinker out over the plate. That that one just tied him up. Pretty good pitch by Falls. Both 
Bonifacio waits. 2 1. And now Qualls has got two strikes. And it's two and two. Got him. Game over. And the Diamondbacks do it again. They come from behind, getting a big home run. Again tonight, Mark Reynolds with a two-run shot in the eighth. It erases a Marlins lead. It delivers the game to Qualls, and he seals the deal in the ninth. And Arizona takes three of the four games in this long.